we're going to talk about evaluating nth roots. And an nth root is defined as the following. So suppose that the nth root of a equals b. This means that a equals b to the n. And so we've most often seen this in square roots, but it also applies to things big, to n's bigger than that. So for instance, we could talk about the square root of 16 equals 4, and whenever there's nothing written, we assume it's a 2. So a, a radical sign without a square root is, without a number is just a square root. And 16 does, in fact, equal 4 squared. But there's a couple of things to keep in mind. There's some differences here. n is an integer, or rather it's a whole number, because it has to be positive. And in fact, it has to be 2 or bigger. It can't be 1. First root doesn't make any sense. And if n is greater than or equal to 2, and even, then a has to be positive, or we can't get a real number out of it. If n is greater than or equal to 3 and odd, then a can be anything, any real number. And so this is important to keep in mind. And in fact, what applies to a also applies to b here. Now, just some definitions. This sign right here is called the radical. The number up here is called the index, n is the index, and the number underneath is called the radicand. So just a couple of definitions to help keep things straight. And what we want to look at now is how we can evaluate these nth roots. And so we're going to talk about perfect nth, root, nth roots first. So let's look at the cube root of 27. What is the cube root of 27? Well, the easy way to find this is to break this down. This is 3 times 9, which is 3 times 3. And since we're looking for a cube root, we want it sets of 3, and so this is 3. A single 3 comes out, because 27 equals 3 cubed. And we've now evaluated it. The fourth root of 256, we could sit and we could ask ourselves, well, what do we multiply to get 256? Let's try... 4 goes into it 64 times, which is 4 and 16, which is 4 and 4. So the fourth root of 256 is 4, because 256 equals 4 to the fourth. We could also deal with negatives. Suppose we have the cube root of minus 125, and since 3 is odd, this is fine, and this comes out, we just copy the negative over, and 5 and 25, which is 5 and 5, and so we get negative 5, because negative 125 is equal to negative 5 cubed. Notice the parentheses, that's really important. Finally, the fourth root of minus 16, because 4 is even, this has to be positive, and so we say this is not a real number, and we're done. We can't say anything more about it. Now the last thing that I want to talk about is how we can use a calculator to find nth roots. So what if we don't have a perfect square? So this is three set, th third root of 17, cube root of 17. So I'm going to open up my calculator here, and I'm going to type in 17. I'm going to raise it to a power, or actually I can just hit this button right here. Let's see. Let's clear this out. If I do 17 cube root, I get 2.57128. And we have to, it keeps going, we have to round it because we can't keep going. This is an irrational number. The radical never stops, and it never goes, never repeats. And so we have to round it at some point. The problem will usually say two or three decimals. Now, sometimes what we're looking at, the, say the 4th root of 53, we don't have on our calculator. So let me show you how to do this real quick. We put the 53 in first, and we raise it to, notice the parentheses, the 1 over the root. So that gives us 0.25, we push equals, and we get 2.69816 to some rounding to get our answer. And so if we don't have a calculator with a cube root or we don't have the right root, then we can use this to get the job done.